Welcome to Legacy. This is the place where ordinary people tell their stories, oftentimes amazing stories that you won't hear anywhere else. I um, had this wonderful set of parents in New Hampshire who adopted me and I couldn't have gone to a more amazing family. And they already had two biological kids of their own and they were always really open about the Korean culture. And, um, so I got a little scared that I would, I got sort of desperate. Like now this is different. This is not just for me and my curiosity. This could be a health thing. If he relapses, we're going to have different things. And so the first thing I hear is my sister's voice. And she says, Oma, which is Korean name for mother. She goes, Oma, you know, it's Young Jin. And I'm just going, what do I say? What do you say in this moment you've waited for? Yeah your whole life. And I just said, oh my, you found me. Like, I'm here. We are here today with a heartwarming story from Sarah Clark Kleinhans. Um, it's a story that is amazing and thrilling and life-changing and crazy and crazy <laughs> yes a lot of crazy a lot of crazy <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself why how did you get to where you're at today oh in a nutshell i was a korean adoptee so i was born in seoul korea and i'm half korean so i always say it's like the upper half is my <laughs> korean stuff but i'm half korean grew up in a tiny little hamlet of a town in new england um, we were like the only minorities there uh, in this town and then I spent time um, traveling the world with a group called Up With People and um, that's its own Oprah as we say. <laughs> and then I ended up in Colorado after that tour because the company that I, Up With People that I toured with ended up in Colorado and I ended up there and there's a lot of crazy stuff in between that happened but that's it in a nutshell. Let's, uh, let's jump right to the, to the crux of it. So uh, Sarah Clark Kleinhans is not your birth name. It is not. My birth name was Oh Young Jin. I thought, and then there's more to that too. I just found out that that's not fully true. But my birth name was Oh Young Jin, and then I was adopted to New Hampshire when I was 14 months old, and I became Sarah Clark. Um, and then later, my married name was Sarah Clark Kleinhans, and that it's really hard to change any name with the government. So sure. that's the name it's going to be from here on <laughs> out. I might get a billion more, but that's the name it's going to be. So you started this whole journey with a DNA test. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, the journey started way, like so much longer ago than this. My parents were amazing. And when I say my parents, I have, I am very lucky. I have two sets of parents. And I, I didn't even realize ever that I would get to say that. I mean, I knew that they were there, but now I know I have names to them. But anyway, I um, had this wonderful set of parents in New Hampshire who adopted me and I couldn't have gone to a more amazing family. And they already had two biological kids of their own and they were always really open about the Korean culture. So we went to Korean school on the weekends, we'd go to everything that came through Boston, um, any Korean festivals or anything, I was always going to those. And then my mom loved adopting kids, we're like stop adopting children. <laughs> they ended up with four of us, we're like stop, wow. that's good. There's, so there's six kids total but they adopted four from Korea. I'm the only half cooked you know, half American, half Korean one. But so Korean stuff was always part of our heritage. And my mom would try and learn how to cook. Uh, well, she's a, 
bless her heart, but she's a terrible cook. And so <laughs> she would try to cook Korean, and it didn't work. But we went to good Korean restaurants. But kimchi, which is the staple of Korea, was very much part of our lives. And, and I always joked that, like, when I meet a man, I'm going to marry him or have a boyfriend or whatever. If he doesn't like the smell of kimchi, he's out. Like, it's just not going to happen, because I always have kimchi around. Of course. And of course. so, um, yeah, they were, they were just amazing, and they, it was so important to them. And then when I was 10, my parents adopted another set of Korean kids who were 10 and 5. So suddenly I had these older siblings who only spoke Korean, only knew the Korean culture, adopted into this little town of 3,000 of us in Rye, New Hampshire on the coast. And so we had to make them feel comfortable because they were lost, absolutely lost. I mean, I came as a baby, so it doesn't matter. But when you come in as 10 and 5, so that's when we really went back to Korean school and, and really tried to get that culture and keep it alive. Um, but it was very difficult because each week we would go to Korean school on Sundays in Boston, and my brother and sister would start losing their Korean because they didn't speak it anywhere. They only uh, spoke English at the house. Right. And they'd lose it, and the Korean people wouldn't understand. Why are you losing your language? This is your native tongue. And so it was a really difficult transition time, because about six months in, my brother and sister didn't understand fully English, and they were losing their Korean. So it's kind of this float time. Yeah. But I was just really grateful that my adoptive parents tried to do everything they could to embrace it. We wore Korean dresses, we learned the Korean dances, and wow. it, was, it was really important. It was very heavy in our family. And so my mother always said, I hope, let's try and find your birth parents. Like, let's look, wow. let's go to Korea, let's, and they really, my younger brother and sister knew their birth mother and they actually kept in contact with her. And my adoptive mom had said to that Korean mother, can you try and find Sarah's you know, Korean wow. mother. So we've always been looking. So it's it's never been a hidden fact from you. I mean, it's something yeah. that you. No, no, no. Well, no. and I didn't look like anyone, so <laughs> <laughs> I looked like nobody. And that was difficult too because I always wanted to fit in, and I was teased a lot growing up. Um, it was not an easy childhood. There were some big racism things that happened in our town. Um, and that was very difficult. My brother was called Chink, and oh, wow. um, my mom had to have some civil rights people come in from Boston. Just, you know, it was, it was different. <laughs> like I said, we're the only minorities there. Right. But then my mother told other people in the town about adopting Korean kids, and so then growing up, there were two other families who ended up adopting Korean kids. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so your, then your we started was, to take over. Your mom was <laughs> groundbreaking. Yeah, she's amazing. She's amazing. And so you've always <laughs> felt this connection to Korean culture? Absolutely. Like, like when I was pregnant, everyone else is craving pickles and ice cream and things like that. All I wanted to do is eat kimchi and rice. I would sit on the <laughs> I would sit on the back of our pontoon boat, just nauseous as I'll get out. I need more kimchi, 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 and everyone's like, "What are you doing?" I said, "I don't know. It's the motherland. Like it's in me. It's just in my blood." Yeah. And, and then, as you're growing up, you're aware of, of this, and you have a locket. Yeah. Uh, that has your biological mother's picture in it with your yeah. your baby picture. Yeah. Growing up with that, did that, how did that feel? It was, I, I was so lucky because I had roots. So many Korean adoptees, and because I, I went on panels and everything at these Korean camps, and I would speak to the um, prospective people who are going to adopt Korean kids, and I would be on their panel, and they'd say, what's it like to be a Korean adoptee? And I'd, you know, say, they'd say, Where, where's your mom? Do you want to find your mom? And I'd say, well, my mom's right here in the audience. Like, this is my mom. You know, the person, and my mom and I joke about it, the person who's up late at night changing your diaper, getting you through the teen, anyone who gets through the teen years, like, <laughs> yeah. if you can survive the teen years, that is your mother, like the person who carried you through those years. Yeah. But so it was always, um, I was very lucky because I had this locket that had my mother's picture on it, and it also had my brother's picture, and he was adopted with me. And so I had that, and I also had birth birth records. I had my oh. mother's name. I had her age. Wow. I knew my dad was a soldier. I knew I was very loved. Um, and I just figured it was sort of a Miss Saigon story and that I was, you know, I yeah. was given up because it's well, a hard that's, life. That's rare in an adoption, mm. especially in, in, in the era we're talking about, yes. to be so open about adoption. Yes. It's, um, yes. Just amazing love and, and, 
and foresight by your by your biological or your Absolutely. adoptive family. And I never felt resentment. I wasn't left somewhere. I didn't wonder, like, was I loved? Did my family right. know about me? I knew I was loved. I just knew that whatever the situation was, they couldn't help it. And that is, or that's what I hoped. But I really felt that. And they said that my biological mother had saved her money and put me in this beautiful travel outfit and put the locket on us. And so I just had hints yeah. that I wasn't, I, I was put up for adoption for uh, for my own good, right. and I was always so grateful to her for that because you hear of all the stories of the mixed babies who were right. left behind. Right. And I was yeah. really lucky. That's always, incredible. I always felt that. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So let's fast forward a little bit to this DNA test. Holy cow! So that opened up a lot of doors for you. Yeah, and and backing up from the DNA test, I had been looking for my biological mother and father, I did not think I could find the Korean side, who is my mother. I just thought there's that's going to be sort of impossible to find her culturally caught. Just It just wasn't going to happen. I could probably more easily figure out who my father was if I did a DNA test. But we had like a Korean flight attendant um, years ago, like 15 years ago, I was holding my son on the plane and he came by and he said, that's a Korean looking baby. And I said, it is a Korean looking baby. And I said, I'm half Korean. And he said, well, I, I'm based in Seoul. I'd love to help you find your, you know, your family. Wow. He went back to Seoul. He went back to where the orphanage was. He did a lot of research and he found, he said, I think I found out who your mother was. I talked to the locals there and there was a woman who had a half Korean baby and half soldier baby, wow. and then a Korean, full Korean brother, they were adopted out, and then your mother disappeared. And they said, we think that's, that that was you. So then I sort of stopped looking. In Korea, I was like, that's not gonna happen. At least I know, you know, kind of that's probably who that is. And so then it was time for DNA. And we, my son, got cancer very unexpectedly, obviously, when he was almost six years old. Mm -hmm. And that was in 2010. And at that point, you're starting to go, I might need a match because he had leukemia. Right. And they say the mixed kids are so hard to match. Native American, Asian, because there's not so much DNA right. stuff. It's, you know, Americans are so like, ooh, I'm an open book. Here's, right. a, here's all my information. Right. Right. And they're not, they're proud people. And um, so I got a little scared that I would, I got sort of desperate. Like now this is different. This is not just for me and my curiosity. This could be a health thing. If he relapses, we're gonna have to find a match. Let's, you know, kind of right. get going. And so I got a DNA test and I did this vlog on it and I was kind of waiting like, this is the big reveal, da 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 da. And nothing came up. <laughs> and I was like, what? How, all this build up for nothing. And then because DNA sometimes is slower, someone comes out of the woodwork, they found my great grandparents. Oh, wow. And those were my American side. And I was like, oh my gosh, here we are. Like, this is it, I can figure it out. But then we found out like my great grandparents had like 16 kids and everything got super complicated because right. you have all these lines you have to figure out. And I gave up again. Because right. I was like, I'm never, once again, there's nothing I know my great grandparents. It seems so easy now, and it was not. So barrier after barrier, roadblock oh, after roadblock. Over and over again, and I, and I would get super excited. You know, it's kind of like when you're a kid and you're cleaning your room, <laughs> or anyone who does a spring project. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, and I'm all in. And then, oh look, it's lunchtime, and then you go back and you go, oh, I don't want to. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> and that's kind of the way it felt like, sure. oh yeah, I'm gonna do it, and then oh, I hit a roadblock, and nope, it's not gonna happen. I'll give up for now. And then somebody popped out of the woodwork. Yeah, it was like, I, I just get chills thinking about it. It was only like um, five weeks ago. And wow. it just happened. And I got, and I get all these um, like notifications from 23andMe. And I had locked myself out because I hate passwords. <laughs> I hate passwords. And so I had locked myself out. So I stopped looking because it was always like, I'm your fifth cousin 20 times removed. Right. And I was yeah, like, yeah. whatever. And so I sort of ignored them. And I kept seeing this guy is like, same guy. He's trying to research, you know, 
reach you, reach you, and I'm trying to get my password, and then I was like, oh, I'll figure it out later. And I went to dinner, and then I got this messenger on Facebook pop up. And he had made this Facebook account, looked me up so that he could reach me, and it turns out, and I get this message, and he said, I just matched you. It says that we could be first cousins or a, a very close match, and he said, I think I'm your nephew. My mother has been looking for you. I think she's your half-sister, and I have a grandmother in Korea. And you're just wow. like, I know I'm shaking thinking Mind about boy. it. You just go, wait, what? This is the side that nothing was going to happen. Right. I was at dead end, dead end, dead end. And then you're like, this is a scam. This can't be real. And my life is really public because I've been trying to find her. And I'm, oh, someone looked it up on, you know, the right. whatever. And then I get this message from this woman, and she's trying to friend me on Facebook. I'm like, I don't know who this is. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm careful about that. So I was yeah. like, I don't know who this is. But she looks Asian-ish like me. And then I looked at her family on Facebook, and she had all the, it said mother and all these different relatives. And it turns out that they were like, so close to her that they felt like mothers, but they weren't her genetic mothers. Uh -huh. Because I was like, wait, this isn't her, because that, that's not my she mom. already has a mother, and that's not, you know. Yeah. Um, and so she reached out, and it's sort of the text that I say, it's like the text heard around the world. And it said something to the lines of, I've been looking for you, I think you're my half-sister, let's wow. talk. And it was just like, what is happening? And wow. then I haven't, I don't think I've slept. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, because your brain is just, I mean, 50, sorry, I'm giving my age, but 52 years. Yeah. And then I had no, like, I love going to the doctor's office because, you know, when you get all those forms and everything, I go, oh, family history, boom, I don't have to do anything. I'm already <laughs> signed in, like, yeah. And so suddenly I'm like, oh, now I'm going to have to fill out some family history because I think I might have family history. Right. And so I, it's like, um, you know those the stories where you have all these parts of a puzzle and they go tch, 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 yeah, and works. everything locks into place. Yeah. And I felt like one side, here comes the family tree and it's almost there. And so she reaches out and we start talking and I'm very skeptical, but I'm hopeful. And she says, um, who's your mother on your birth records? I'm like, I don't, have a, I don't have a half sister. I came over with a half brother, I don't have a half sister. And then um, she said, who's your mother? And I didn't want to give away everything, right. just in case, she's fake. So I posted a picture that I had on the locket, and I posted it, and she's like, that's our mother. And once again, I'm like, well, anyone could say that. I said, what is your mother's name? And she said, Pok, P-O-K, Cha, C-H-A. And I look at my, I like frantically looking at my adoption papers, and I see a totally different name, and I, my heart sinks. I'm like, oh, it's not her. And then I read, that was my foster mother. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I, this could be it. And then I look down and it says Bok, B-O-K, instead of P-O-K. And I'm like, nope, that's not it. My mother's name was Bok Ja, not Pok Cha. And then I went, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that's the same name. Yeah. And I mean, now even just, wow. just that going. That was only five weeks ago. Five weeks ago. Wow. Yeah, and I'm still. It's fresh. It's fresh and it's raw, and I, I compartmentalized it for a little bit. I was on this high for about three, four days, and then I just sort of had to back it up a little. I booked my ticket to, to meet her and, I, and all that, but then I put it away. Because it's too much. Sure. It's a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. You lived a, I won't say, I won't say the number, but you lived a certain number of years. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You lived a certain number of years yeah. knowing one thing, yeah. and then all of a sudden you have this information. It just yeah. it rocks your world. It yeah. changes things big time. Absolutely. And I can see it. I can see it in your head. I can see it in your posture. Your po right now. You're just like, yeah. You're, you're so much. You know, it's you can just see get it. a hot flash. Yeah. that's because of my age, <laughs> <laughs> which we're not talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I mean, this is just having this knowledge. Yeah. Coming into the to this with this knowledge. I mean, that's you. You kind of halfway put some effort into it a couple of times in your life, and you thought you had some leads with your. Uh, biological father, yeah, and out of the blue, Whew. Korea. Yeah. How now I know I crave kimchi. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
the moment that you, in the moments before you were going to meet your biological mother, what was going through your head? Well, if I can backtrack, sure. I had a chance to talk to her on the phone. And that was epic because my sister and I talked all night, all night long, texting, back and forth, back and forth. And then the next day, we, um, something, we just kept texting. And I was thinking I'd talk, maybe talk to my mother, and I was like, I don't know if she speaks English, I don't know anything like that. And I showed my kids, my kids woke up, and I was like, look, they're 17 and 20. And I was like, look at this picture. I think this is my half-sister. And they're like, well, Mom, she looks just like you. I was like, really, what? <laughs> because nobody's ever looked like me. I've sure. never looked like anyone before, which was very difficult my whole yeah. life. Yeah. I've never looked like anyone, and that's been sad and difficult and I always was fascinated with kids who look like their parents. I was like, do I look like anyone? Like and then I had my daughter and if you see her, she looks like me. So I was like, yay, I like <laughs> genetics. But I didn't have anyone who I looked like. Right. And so that was this empty spot. So she, my sister and I are talking all night long and then the next morning I had no warning. I my phone gets this message and she said I'm doing a three-way call. Our mother's going to be on the phone. And I was like, does she speak English? Where, like, what's... I don't even know what to say. And fortunately, my son came running into the room with a recorder. And I'm so grateful because we talked for two and a half hours. And I don't... I remember maybe I, I, this much of sure, it. Sure, of course. Um, and so the first thing I hear is my sister's voice. And she says, Oh, Ma, which is Korean name for mother. She goes, Oh, Ma. You know, it's Young Jin. And I'm just going, what do I say? What do you say in this moment you've waited for? Yeah. Your whole life. And I just said, oh, my, you found me. Like, I'm here. Oh, wow. Like, you found me. And you just hear her go, oh. Yeah. And it was just, yeah, it's amazing. It's surreal. And I had had all these questions my whole life, too, that I wanted to ask over and over and over and I was given the opportunity to ask and hear these answers and yeah that was so that was that but then meeting her in person was a whole nother woof in that few minutes before you did meet her what was going through your head I half of me wanted to turn and run you wait for that moment your whole life and then I was like I just, I need to, I don't want, I can't handle this. And I'm a pretty calmish, you know, person. My friends are like, what? No. <laughs> but I'm a, I can kind of get my act together. And in that moment, I was just like, it was an out-of-body experience. It reminded me of when my son got cancer, when they told me about that. And your brain literally just leaves your body and just kind of goes over here. And I had that. Yeah. Where I was like, am I going to pass out? Am I, am I going to be able to stand? What do I say? You know, does she understand me, even though I had spoken to her, right. you know, on the phone? And it was difficult to understand, just, you know, culturally and on the phone, and yeah. And then that moment, she came to the door. It was amazing because she came in and I embraced her. And to hear her, you don't know how that's going to go. And then I'm like, does she was, I don't know. I just don't know. And she, the cool thing is, I had told my sister, don't show her pictures. So she hadn't seen photos of me. She knew nothing. She said the last time she saw me was the day she was putting me on the plane. Wow. And so she had this 14-month-old baby picture in her mind. Wow. Um, and then she'd been given a picture from the adoption agency of me, like a little bit later, but that was it. So she only had Oh Young Jin as a baby in her head. She had no idea. She didn't, she didn't know Sarah. She knew nothing, nothing at all. And, wow. and so to see her and to hug her, and all she said was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I said, don't, don't be sorry. I had the best life. Like I have had the best life. Like That's it's awesome. been epic. 
That's you know, awesome. not easy, sure. but it's been epic. And now this is just, I just held her and I said, this is a new, like, this is a new chapter. Yeah. You know, you're, you're only 85 and your relatives live to be 100, which I just found out. I better get insurance. <laughs> if anyone has insurance out there for a nursing home, I'm going to need it like, sooner than later. But yeah, so it was that moment of just, and you could feel her tense. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she had to look away. And then you just feel her go. And she just looked and she said, my young Jen. And I said, yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is, How incredible. I mean, I could relive that over and over I, I in my whole life. I got to see telling it. Yeah. I mean, it's, that, simple. It, it's, it's an amazing, amazingly powerful moment. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by the technology, the, mm. the, I mean, Facebook and DNA testing and all of that, because 25 years ago, this never could have happened this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when you were 15 years ago, when you were on the plane, yeah. you thought you hit a dead end. Yeah, and, yeah, I did. And So tell me, speaking of dead ends, you got confirmation of who your father was. Oh my gosh, that was, see, and I have chills again. When I was on the phone with her, that was my big thing. I'd had a genealogist. Once we found out who my great-grandparents were, I hired a genealogist to see how far we could get. And the genealogist said, okay, out of your 16 aunts or whatever potential, and they narrowed it down and um, said, there's two people who we think could be your father. Neither one of them fully matches. One of them doesn't match age-wise because he's younger than your dad should be. And the other one, they weren't sure if he was in Korea. But these were the only two, everyone else was sort of a dead end. So we were like, it's either this or there's a child that we're missing from the genetics that we don't know what's going on. And so, um, yeah, so there are these two and I'm like, how could, neither one of them fits. And so I was so excited to talk to her and be like, she's going to have this answer. And I knew the last name of my family, and that was Bradshaw. And I knew if she said at least Bradshaw, then I was in the right direction. Right. And I said, what was my father's name? And she said, Bradshaw. And I was like, oh, yes. Now I know it's one of these two men. And then I was like, what's his first name? I've waited my whole life. And she said, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? It's like, Arr! It was a little bit of time ago. I know, and then I said it again. Okay, now do you remember, like, what's this first? And I'm, like, throwing names out, and she's like, I don't remember. And I'm sure she's over, what, I mean, yeah. I can't even, like, everything. And um, so I asked her probably two or three more times, and she said, we just called him Bradshaw. She said he was in the Army. So I was like, all right, well, at least we know he was in the Army in 1969, because that's where I was, you know, at least we have a little bit more to go by. Right. And so because of social media and Facebook and everything, friends and people said, hey, we want to help you now with this journey, because I make my journey pretty public. And they said, a, a friend said, I want to help you. And he went back and he found yearbook pictures of the man we thought probably could be, um, because out of those two men, only one had the last name Bradshaw. So he found yearbook pictures of him when he was 17 years old. We couldn't find military pictures, but we found pictures from when he was 17 and this gentleman who's helping me he sent me the picture and I looked and I was like oh my gosh that is my son he looks just like my son just like my son and I showed my son I said Addison come here look at this picture this could be your grandfather he goes that's me mom I was like ah, yes so we're pretty sure this is who it is and it wasn't until I met my biological mother, and I printed out a picture, that photo, and I was like, come on, please just trigger something. And, oh, the other thing that we'd found out one day um, before I got here, she remembered, she said to my sister, we called him Sergeant Bradshaw. And I was like, okay, I know he's a sergeant. And then she said he was 41. All my records said he was 36. And I was like, that's it. That has to be him. Because now the age fits. Matches, right. It all matches. And then, in, you know, it said sergeant and everything matched. But I just needed to hear it from her. And so two days ago, crazy, right. I showed her this photo. And she said, I said, is this my dad? And it was one of these like, <gasps> come on. 
edge of your seat. It was edge of my seat. It's like, like I said, it's, you know, here's this part of the family tree and here's this other part floating around here and is it gonna like, and she said, yeah, it's your dad. And then she said, that's Jimmy. And I went, his name is James, yeah, that's him. Wow. That's him. Awesome. And so all of a sudden my family tree that had been empty Filling forever up. just went boom, boom. Yeah. And everything lined up. How exciting. Now I have a lot more paperwork at the doctor's <laughs> office because now I know family history. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk to your kids in a minute, but yeah. I mean, how? Uh, this is incredible. They have a, a whole new family to, yeah. to, to, to be with and to yeah. learn about. And, and that's going to be exciting as a mom. Well, and there's, there were so many commonalities, too, which was amazing because we started comparing pictures, and my sister and my daughter look so similar, and my son and my nephew's son, like, I went, oh, my gosh, everybody looks like everybody. You this had somebody is, looking like people. I, we had someone who looked like each other. My sister and I looked similar. I mean, it was really, awesome. and then my mother said to me when I met her, she said, she kept staring at me. She said, you look like your father. He was such a nice man. And that was the other thing that was huge to me. What was he like? Did he know? I didn't think he knew me. Right. She said, oh, he knew you. He loved you and he knew you. And we just, wow. and she said he laughed on your 100th day birthday, which is a big celebration right. um, in Korea. And we figured he went, he went back, you know, another tour. He wasn't able to be with me um, at that time. And so, but he loved me and she said he was such a good man and so nice and That's so kind. Great. And when my son walked in, her eyes just went, because she was looking at, you know, a, a Jimmy, a replica of Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. She kept wow. saying, "Oh, it looks just like your grandmother." This is amazing. So they're excited, and and we found out too. My son is um, black belt in martial arts, wow. and he found out that his grandmother is a fourth level black belt. Oh wow! And if you talk to her, ask her about some of her little antics with her black belt. She's she's. I was like, "Oh, your grandma's like." <laughs> Hardcore! She can take them down, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, That's awesome. pretty amazing. Sarah, it was wonderful to meet you, Pleasure. wonderful to hear your story. Um, we're going to come back to you in, in a few minutes um, with your mom. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Crazy. Um, Thank you for letting me tell this story. Oh, I, I, um, I love hearing the stories. Um, <sighs> it feels good because then it feels real. Yeah. Because it doesn't feel real at all. It, what, what's mind-blowing to me is this is only five weeks. Yeah. From, from finding out to... to Monday, a meeting, yeah. five weeks. Yeah. This is kind of, that's just a whirlwind. I don't even know what's up and what's down. Yeah, yeah. I can't even imagine. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I basically, I had so many pings on Facebook and everybody, yeah. my high school friends and my childhood friends and my college and up with people, all the different phases of life were like, we've been waiting for this your whole life sure. too. Like, this is so interesting to see where you came from, like who yeah. the heck made you? <laughs> where did you come from? All other questions are answered. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. We are here with Madeline Kleinhans, uh, the daughter of Sarah, who we just spoke to, um, and you have a new grandmother. Yeah, I do. I actually have a whole new side of my mom's family which is completely mind-blowing, so. When, when your mom started doing this, this search and the 23andMe and all that, I mean, your mom's been searching on and off for, for a long time, but then the 23andMe thing came up and all, this, all these contacts were made. How did, that, how did you feel during the search? Yeah, well, um, it's kind of been like, for my whole life, I've known Nana and um, her like adoptive mother and that whole side of the family. And then it wasn't until I was like a little bit older that I realized that, you know, she did have another mother and father potentially somewhere when I knew that she was looking for him because she talked to a lot of her old friends who had like some connections that were able to like, um, like reach out to certain people and like look for her. But I personally didn't get too invested in it because I didn't think that it was very probable that they were going to find her because that's such a far reach and my mom was you know given up for adoption in kind of a different time frame where things aren't documented the same and so I was like okay well you know we'll keep this like hope kind of in the back of our minds but you know I wasn't super like oh we need to go find her now because we didn't even know if they were alive. 
Um, but when she did the 23andMe, we, I think she mostly did it for like kind of a medical history, so we actually had no anticipation of her finding anyone related to her through that. Like there was, you know, that little chance, but I mean, what are the chances that someone, especially in a different country, are gonna do, you know, like a test like that and, you know, so. Apparently pretty good. Right? <laughs> um, so what, having this new family, having this new entire extended family to, 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 to be around, what's, what, what do you, how do you feel? I'm extremely excited. Like, I mean, my mom told me I, she found out in the middle of the night and then I woke up and got a text and it was just a screenshot of this Facebook profile picture. Um, and it looked just like her and, but I was like, that's not my mom. And then I read the caption that came with the picture and she was like, I think this is my half sister. She just reached out to me. Like I like found my family and I was like, what? Like, what is this picture? And I swear I spent like the next like 30 minutes just stalking Linda's um, Facebook profile <laughs> pictures. Cause I was like, this looks like my mom, but wow. it's not. And wow. then um, kind of more information poured in and I just got so ecstatic because it's like these complete strangers, but you still have that love for them that you would have for someone who it feels like you've known for like a long time. Yeah. And like, they do feel like family and um, yeah, it's been it's been crazy so far, but it's been nothing but good. I'm really excited to have. It feels like we're expanding in a way, you know, That's like awesome. really, really quickly. So, That's awesome. yeah. Um, growing up, were you very connected with your Korean heritage? Um, kind of, not so much. My mom was always super into the Korean culture. Like we celebrated like um, Chinese New Year always, and we would always eat Korean food, and especially because she traveled with other like with up with people right. she had a lot of experience um like actually in different countries right but i never really um indulged myself in any like of the culture too but much but now you're direct to the source is that going to yeah. are you going to explore a little bit yeah i have a feeling that um it's going to become a bigger part of my life and um we're going to be like eating a lot more Korean food. So when you met your grandma for the first time, how did you feel? Oh, I, like, there's almost not even a word to put to that because I just looked at her and I was like, this, this person was part of the reason that I'm here and I had no idea she existed a week ago. Right. And, but she feels like my grandmother. Like I hugged her and I just felt that love of, you know, like from a grandparent and I felt it from her too and I was like I knew right off the bat as soon as we saw them that everything was gonna go like smoothly because I was obviously pretty nervous like sure. I mean you don't know what's gonna happen so but I am just blessed that it all went the way that it did that's awesome that's Thank very you. very exciting um, I, I can't even imagine being in, in that situation and, and yeah. it's, it's just your mom was telling me some of the stories, and I was just getting, I was getting tingly all over it, which was so powerful. I mean, it's, and then... It is really like a one in a million chance. Yeah. And um, everyone had a contribution to awesome. the end result. Like, you know, um, we wouldn't have even had this at all if um, my mom's nephew didn't do the 23andMe, because right. that's how they connected. And it's like, wow, like, that's not even someone immediate but right. like still immediate family enough to tie back to my mom. Wow. It's like, what are the chances, you know? Like, it is. Hi, so uh, my name is Madeline, and pretty much summary, if you're new here, of how Heartfelt Hugs got started is because my brother was diagnosed with um, leukemia when he was five, and then as I progressively got older, I started to realize that there were more siblings who, you know, felt really... So I understand you also have a nonprofit organization. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, my brother, you know, as it will be known, had leukemia when he was five years old, and then that puts me at around eight, so I was kind of a crazy kid. 
And as I started to mature around like that kind of environment, um, I started to feel a lot of like neglect just because of the fact that my brother needed a lot of attention. Um, he was very sick, which is very understandable now that I'm not 12 years old. But at the time, I was like, my parents are never home. I'm getting shipped off to people who I don't know very well. And it's like, I just wanted to be with my little brother because he's always been my best friend. Like, it's just me and Ad. Um, we've always been super close. So that led to a lot of angst and um, the need for negative attention because I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't getting it any other way, which like obviously wasn't true. My parents were doing the best they could, um, don't get me wrong, but once again, 12 year old me saw things a little differently. And I remember the one specific time like this started it all. I went in for one of my brother's appointments and they had this little chest of toys that he could pick from after he got his blood drawn. And I remember asking the nurse if I could also pick something. And she was like, no, this is just for the cancer kids. And I was like, well, we need something for the siblings, because I was, you know, sure. once again, just a little brat who was like, <laughs> what? Why did he get something? But that one idea actually sprouted into something um, beautiful because I worked a lot with my mom. She, you know, was really helping me direct my intentions because I was so young, but I had a lot of, like, I had a lot of ideas and motivation to make this work. And we talked to Children's Hospital and we were actually going to put in a toy chest there. So I started collecting toys and, you know, um, I had like a little suitcase that I carried around and was letting all the other siblings pick out of. But we didn't end up getting one in the hospital just because of all the rules and regulations. So then I was like, well, what am I going to do with all of these toys that I want to give to these kids? Um, and then we started talking to the organization There With Care, who is helping us at the time because we were a critically, like, a family of a critically ill kid. Um, so they were helping us out and they're like, well, this is something we could take under our wing and help you guys turn this into something bigger. But they're like, why don't we make this more of, like, a meeting? like a therapy group and I was like okay well that's great but I don't necessarily want to run a therapy group I'm like I want this to be something that the kids look forward to like you know like I wanted to just give out toys like give them a good time like um so we ended up coming to the conclusion and this is after about a year and a half of the initial idea and you know just going through all of this because it did take a lot and a lot of people got involved and it started to become a plan and then we came up with the idea of Heartfelt Hugs, which is um, my nonprofit now. So we have um, biannual, like, get to, or bi monthly, not biannual. We have bi monthly get togethers, and um, it's for the kids. Like, we just do fun activities. Like, we go ice skating, and we've done the pumpkin patch, and like, um, it's just for everyone and the families too to get together and we do hand out the toys there nice. and everyone gets like gifts on their birthdays and stuff but we've turned it into more of like just kind of a day to just focus on you know the siblings of the critically ill kids and the whole awesome. family is always welcome because it does turn out to be like kind of one big support system because you know everyone gets to know each other and we've had some incredible friendships come out of it but yeah, that's kind of... Your organization is Heartfelt Hugs? Heartfelt Hugs by Madeline Cares, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We are here with Addison Kleinhans, uh, Sarah's son. Um, it, it is kind of because of you that a lot of this started, that this 23andMe thing happened. It's crazy. Um, your mom got the 23, or the DNA test because you were looking for a match because? So I had childhood leukemia. As a kid, I had blood cancer. So that's kind of what we were going for. We wanted to see medical history with 23andMe is big on, they show a lot of medical stuff. Right. So we wanted to see what we could get from that. We wanted to see blood matches, that kind of stuff. So. It's really interesting. That's how we kind of came to it. Addison, what do you think you do now? You're going to meet your grandmother. I think it's so crazy. I can't wait till we're there. It's not real until I meet them. I know, right? Through a lot of that trauma, a lot of that 
being a critically ill kid, as your sister said, um, you have a whole new family. Yeah, to, it's crazy. How does that feel? It's honestly like a dream. It's so surreal. It's like being a critically ill kid, your family is so important to you because if you don't have your family, you're not going to make it. You have to have those people who are going to stand by you through thick and thin. And now, just like so many years later, I've, it's crazy, especially even for me. I haven't been, I've been on this earth for what, 17 years? And after all this time, we've had, we find this family that we never even knew we were related to or existed. And they're all alive, they're here, they're in California. Like, how crazy is that? Yeah, just and a two hour flight away yeah, from you. They're amazing people. So awesome. it's so cool to know that I'm related to these amazing people that I never even knew before. When you met your grandma for the first time, mm -hmm. how did you feel? I don't know. It felt like a dream. <laughs> it's like just the connections is amazing. I'm so glad to find that I'm, I came from a family line of amazing people like that. Like, I know it's an amazing moment for my mom and it's a grandma that I never knew existed like and you feel like that kind of hidden connection like you know that you are so similar and you have these things from your past that yeah. they connect you and it's really cool. That's that's I, I, I've told your sister and your mom I can't even wrap my head around yeah, what, that's how, how like, this is even going for all you guys this is just such an incredible story. Um, it's just just seeing, being, hearing the story. I'm speechless. Um, do you have? I mean, your grandma's you a little obviously older. Um, mm -hmm. So, are you looking forward to, to spending some more time with her? What's uh, what are the plans for the future for you and your grandma? Yeah, so we want to spend as much time as we can with her. And I have now two grandmas on my mom's side, which is kind of crazy. I have one that's 98 or something wow. now, and one that's 86 or something. So. Wow. You really just want to spend all the time yeah. that you can. I'm yeah. someone who I know that there's big money in the world and I want to be someone who has big money and my family does, but I don't care about that. I would rather spend this time and every opportunity I can to just be with these people because these are memories that you're never going to get back. And it's yeah. just you want to spend every moment with them, learn as much as you can about them. Yeah. And the hidden Hamlet. Like yeah. the hidden family history that you yeah. could find is truly amazing. You, uh, you have obviously have a, a little bit different take on life, having overcome leukemia. So you understand the value of life. Oh, yeah. So, so this has got to be just incredibly powerful for you to yeah. be able to share your life with somebody brand yeah, new. Yeah, that's part of it. it. Was weird. It's so amazing that after, again, even at my mom's age, she found her mom, and her mom's still alive. Yeah. Like, what's the chance of that? That you have. Two living moms. That's a blessing. Like it's truly a blessing. That's a blessing. And what are your plans crazy. for the rest of the week? Oh, we're going to Koreatown tomorrow. She's nice. going to show us all the amazing places. Awesome. So, yeah, Korea, can't wait. Koreatown is a fun place. Yeah. And after that, we have to go home and get back to normal life. But we're coming right back out here. You That's better exciting. bet. That's now awesome. Now that we know that she's here, we're going to keep coming That's and great. make the most out of our time. That is outstanding. So while this is not the actual reunion, this is a reunion of sorts. Um, this is the uh, kind of the culmination <laughs> of a lifetime. From, from the locket to now, all your questions have been answered. Um, what was it like for that first meeting for both of you? Well, yeah, yeah, a dream. <laughs> like yeah. a dream, yeah. yeah. I guess it was like a dream. I think I never can find my daughter. <laughs> I know. And I'm here. I know. It's crazy, huh? When you when you were walking up to the house for the very first time, uh, what were your thoughts? What were you thinking? What house? What, when you, when you when saw you me, the day you saw oh, me. On what were you thinking when you were walking? Oh, walking. Yeah, I can't see nothing. This, I can actually, that's right, I can see nothing. Right. Yeah. I think it about when my daughter so so excited. So excited. I had another one, <laughs> young you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's she's saying there's two of us. Right. And my brother wasn't here and she's just thinking about both of us and that you found us. Yeah, I find anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean just 
to me, it, I, I can't even, just hearing your story, I can't even put into words I, just how amazing this mm -hmm. is. Um, it was ultimately just kind of happenstance. You weren't even really actively at the time looking and, and you know, you, you hear, I mean, from, from Korea to Koreatown, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just, it's, it, was a, it was quite a journey. And you. Um, I think in my life, whenever I can actually my kid. And here my you are. All of a sudden, I cannot find. So, I mean, so many years I started looking for. I couldn't find. Then my niece wanted to look for her. Huh? She cannot find. I call. I find. Young girl, young girl, all. I find. Yeah, you. I was looking too, right? You were looking, and I was looking. Everybody was looking. We just didn't match up yet. Yeah. Now we got. <laughs> now we got it. You're not yeah. getting rid of me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. You're stuck with me. Now I noticed that she called you by your Korean name. Yeah. How does that feel? Well, when I was on tour with Up With People, my name tag said Oh Young Jin okay. and Sarah. Okay. And I wore my Korean hanbok, my Korean dress, and I would always come out on stage and say, Annyeonghaseyo. You know, <laughs> and so it's good because I'm like, and my friends have called me that sometimes, and you know, so I'm used to it. But we found out something interesting. Yes. You told me, mm -hmm. tell me my birthday, I think, is May 10th. Right? When is my birthday? May 1st. <laughs> I went, whoa, whoa, wait, what? May 1st, 1969, May 1st, you got. Ninth, like, I was like, no, 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 it's <laughs> May 10th. And she no. said, no, May 1st. See, <laughs> I don't know whether I should wish you a belated birthday I or know. a few happy birthday in the future. I know, I don't know either. And the, I, I think you people are mistake. They did. They transposed the numbers. Yeah. yeah. They transposed the numbers. Yeah. And then we. I got her mother. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you were there, right? Yeah. Nineteen sixty-nine. The maid first you got. Yeah. I got a C-section. Yeah, you have a scar to prove it. Yeah. Right. Your father got a so scared. I got a C-section. Yeah. <laughs> I remember everything. Yeah. My memory is really good. Your memory is <laughs> really good. I know. It's all the ginseng, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or did all the kimchi? Or all the kimchi? No, I'm not eating much kimchi. No. What? I'm not eating my oh, kimchi. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, you love the kimchi. Oh, my sister. My yeah. half-sister loves kimchi. I love kimchi. And also, your your name, uh, according to your biological dad, oh, wasn't my necessarily goodness. Young Jin either. Oh, Ma, what was my name, my other name? Oh, I make your name to Young Jin. Yeah. Before Geraldine. Who's Geraldine? You, father <laughs> called you Geraldine. What was Geraldine my whole name? No, Geraldine. Your father call you make it Jolene. I don't want to make it Jolene make it make it small. <laughs> I don't want to make it my kid small. This is why I call her name Young so, Jin. So my name was Geraldine Bradshaw. Yes, Geraldine Bradshaw. You got. It. And my birthday and was it, May first. <laughs> who am May I? 1st. <laughs> I thought I, I thought I had all the answers. I'm like, yeah, I know who I am now. Hmm. I know my. You know, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, I'm not even who I thought I was. And so it was interesting because I went in for a doctor's appointment the other day, and you have to fill out the paperwork, this darn paperwork again, right. and it said, "What's your birthday?" And I was like, "Well, I know what it is, but like, who am I really?" Like, what birthday do I put down? I mean, obviously, I'm not going to go through changing it, but sure. it's really in my head. Right, yeah. And so May 1st came, and all my friends were like, Happy birthday, Geraldine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, May 1st is happy sex to mine. Never, I'm not forgot about you. Yeah, you don't forget about me. Well, so I think that Geraldine Bradshaw and May 1st, Bradshaw, like, yeah. she's she's a whole different personality. So anything I do wrong, I'm going to be like, Geraldine did it. It wasn't Sarah, it was Geraldine. Geraldine, your father called first time, Geraldine Bolesio. Do you, was that a relative of his? I mean, did he have a sister or someone named Geraldine? Well, he don't have the family. Oh, I mean, he didn't have family. So where did that name, he just made that up? Yeah. He made oh. his new name. Bolesio I means his last name. That's his fit. Mm -hmm. yeah, the last name. But Geraldine, wow, so he hot. Call, I would call him Jimmy. Sergeant Jimmy. Sergeant Jimmy. Sergeant Jimmy. I mm -hmm. love it. So you Sergeant have an artifact yeah. that Father your mom Jimmy. gave you when you were getting on the plane to come to the U.S. Can we see it? I, I am the art. Are you kidding <laughs> me an artifact? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Oma, did you did you get make this for me? 
Yeah, this make, I make it two of them, one of them young girl, I give it to them, one of them, I give it one size, so I think it don't have my face, yeah. <laughs> this is like there for you, a young girl, I got a one of them, young girl, another one back, this is like my face. So this is her yeah. beautiful picture. Yes. And then on the other side is my baby picture. And then she did the same for my brother, who she calls yeah. Young Yu. Um, and she did the same for him. Yes, the same for one side of his face, or one side of my face. This was the key. I mean, this really yeah. was the key. This was the key, and my adoptive parents kept this for mm. me, and it was so special um, to me. And the younger he have too? Yeah, he has his oh. too. Yeah, wow. and and it's how I found you because you made this so many years ago. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. That was smart yeah. of you to to do I that. To lost my kid. Yeah. I cannot keep two kids. I had to work. I'm working this hour. Young girl have to somebody else. I have to pay every month. They have to my rent. Then I got a new baby again. Come on, I have to baby milk. I have to buy. Then sure. somebody watch and that uh, housekeeper have to pay. Very very hard for me. Yeah. Yeah. And really that's the big thing that I told her. I said, nobody is angry. Nobody think they think you're a hero because you were so kind to give us up, you know? And I said, when you said, I'm sorry, I said, oh, no, 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 don't be sorry, because what you did was amazing. Because a lot of people, if I had stayed there and you didn't have money and maybe I couldn't be healthy, I would have had a different life. But you, you gave your heart and you put me on an airplane and I went to this family who took care yeah. of me and was able to do the things that you couldn't do at that time. But that's, we're so grateful to you. I cannot, I cannot keep on. My sister, one of our younger sister, she wanna, she loved her. He wanna keep her. I said, I can't do that for her brother. I had to put them together. I don't wanna separate them, that's why I sent for United States. And that's what's amazing too. She didn't wanna separate us. Yeah. And so if my aunt had kept me, my poor brother, like, right. what, you know, and mm -hmm. so, so to know that and to go, not only am I giving one child, but I'm giving both. And she made sure that we stayed in the same family. A maternal instinct, a maternal yeah. love. Amazing. That, and, and what did you tell young you before he got on the plane? You said you told him. Oh, to take you have care to me. take care of your sister. You old enough, you have to, your sister, you have to take care of your sister. You have to watch him. You say. You say. Did he live up to that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and he was four. Wow. Only four years old. No, five. He, maybe that record's wrong. Michael got four? Yeah. So are, the, are You're one year old, you got five years old. I got all my kid all four years are different. Oh, see, we're going to find out. Wow. <laughs> so four maybe he has a different name too. Breaking news <laughs> right here on the show. <laughs> right. It's an exclusive nice right. name. Cheyunggyu. Cheyunggyu. He had a different last name. Mm. Yeah. Last name, uh, Che. Oh, Che? Che. Oh, Rashman. not not Tay? No, Che. Che okay, Young see, you were learning. Wow. On the records it says Tay. Oh, Che Is Che. Mm -hmm. oh. che see, you're learning this first. Wow. I'm learning this. All right, uh, brother. Have, All right brother out there, right. your name is different. Oh, paper got a messed up. Paper messed up, yeah. Are there plans to, to, for her to meet? Uh... Hopefully, huh? My family, only my sister, younger sister, she loved my daughter. She wanna keep, I said, no, you can't do that for. I have to, young you, same, same place I wanna. If we, my sister kept the enemy, she died. Younger sister, she died about four or five years ago. Wow. She got a cancer. Her house is still empty. Well, so let's go have a party. My dream, twice I go to her house, I pass. I'm not going in. Yeah, you just pass by it? Uh-huh, my dream. Hmm. She's so nice, my sister, younger sister, yeah. she got cancer. Aww. She knows now. I think she knows. Yes, she yes. knows. Yes. No, I pray. Last time I pray for. You told her, huh? Mm -hmm. You told her. You said. You said on Monday. You told her that you found me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she knows. Yes, she knows. She's watching you. Yeah. Your, your guys' smile is so similar. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> See? You're, you're, I, I can see both of I can see you in the smile. See, I look like someone. Yes. Yay. Yay. I said I always wanted to look like someone, and I look like you. Well, do, do I look like 
When you look at me, do I look like my father? Or Yeah, she looks like a father. Yeah. Wow. A little bit father. Yeah, you look like somebody. Mm -hmm. I know, like it's so somebody. cool. Isn't that great? Yes. Well, I just want to thank you guys for sharing your story with us. Um, this has been um, amazing. I mean, just to, to, to sit here and see you sitting here holding hands. I know. It was just, right? uh, just My amazing. Mama. Yeah, yeah. Um, to see the excitement in your kids, to My see daughter. the excitement in your grandkids. My daughter. My daughter. My old daughter. Oh, I'm, wait, I'm the old daughter. <laughs> <laughs> But you are, you are nine days older. I got a two daughter, all right? Yeah. Small daughter and your sister. I don't want to be the old daughter. <laughs> nah, but you're not nine days older. older. No, you okay, see. good. Yeah, yeah. Just all right, you're okay. fixing. All right, you're Who's making it better. <laughs> Thanks, Oma. <laughs> I'm not old. But it was it was great to see your kids have their reaction. Yeah. It was great yes. to see your grandkids. Uh, yeah. Talk mm -hmm. about meeting I, you. Um, the story is amazing. I thank am, you. I'm grateful that you have. Um, so wonderfully shared your story with us. Thank you um, for listening. I got so many children like children now. Yeah, <laughs> you do. Brenda have a wall. Yeah, yeah. She, she her, her whole family grew too because she said to me, "How many grandkids do I have?" And so, as much as my family grew, I forgot about it. Her family yeah. grew too, and she yeah. said, "Does your brother have kids?" And yes. Oh, wow. and so her right. family, yeah. your family just got big too. Yeah. I got my son, he had a daughter and a son. Her, she got a, he got us a two granddaughter and her daughter size, she got a one grandson, one daughter. She got a three girl, one boy. One grandson, three granddaughter. My son got an old son. And that was the other thing we found out. I have another brother. Wow. Yeah, three siblings. Thanks. Wow. Plus all my adoptive ones, so there's like it's your family is just so young, many young Christmas have presents one. to buy. <laughs> <laughs> she have yeah, young he have has one one boy, one boy, mm -hmm. three, four. Boranda got a great grandchild. It's a big family, big family. Yeah, party, party in Korea. Let's go or Koreatown. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. I'll bring the camera. <laughs> Again, it thank was you. it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, it was very so nice much. meeting you. Wonderful to meet you. Come um, uh, yeah, yeah, As your come as your relationship down. develops and grows, we'd love to have you back and talk to you more. Um, we like oh, to. You love come to me then. Yeah, my Korean. There we go. Are you gonna learn, are you gonna learn Korean? Well, uh, that was it. Come to me then. Come to me then. Yeah. What does that mean? Thank you. <laughs> Legacy is a unique platform for ordinary people to tell their story. Uh, the stories we hear on Legacy are unique and different and empowering. They're not your ordinary story. Legacy means history. It means your values. It means what you want to pass on to the next generation and to future generations. Thank you for watching Legacy.